Kailash, and I'm here at the Hub Culture Pavilion in Davos. I'm outside the Ice House, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Ivo de Boer, Director General of the Global Green Glo Growth Institute. Thank you for coming along. My pleasure. So, we're past COP21. What are your thoughts? My thoughts are that it was a fantastic political achievement. Uh, I mean, the climate change negotiations have been very difficult for a very long time. In Paris, we saw a breakthrough with almost every country in the world committing to climate action. So that was fantastic. The challenge now is to deliver on all the commitments that were made in Paris, and that is going to be uh, going to require a huge effort. What kind of huge effort specifically? What do you think are the biggest challenges facing countries? The, the biggest challenge is that, you know, even, even after Paris, the primary concern of most developing countries is economic growth and poverty eradication. And many of the countries that made great promises in Paris still don't fully understand how they can deliver on those climate promises and still lift people out of poverty and grow their economies. So the big challenge is how can you deliver on the climate agenda and on the growth mm -hmm. agenda at the same time. So that's precisely what the Global Green Growth Institute does. So tell me some of the things that you think have been the most successful in helping developing countries, for example, do just that. I think the most successful things are around working with countries to understand the economy of a different climate agenda. For example, we've done work in Indonesia that actually shows it's economically more attractive to go for renewables than for coal. Mm -hmm. And then people begin to listen, if you can make the business case in that way. And the same story applies with work that we're doing in Africa on decentralized off-grid renewable energy. Mm -hmm. If you can make the business case, people will listen. If you can't, stop talking. Do you think the fast growth in mobile technology will be what enables these countries to make this happen, especially when you talk about the decentralized use of renewables in places in, in Africa. Everyone always talks about that alongside the growth in mobile technology so that you can pay for that, examples directly from your phone. That's certainly part of the solution. Uh, and I think what the main thing I think we can learn from modern telephone systems is how you can leapfrog technology. Mm -hmm. That we don't need to extend the electricity grid, that we can think of, of different more, model more modern solutions. And what goes with that are different payment systems of the kind that you're talking about. So yes. And just in terms of where your fears are, what keeps you awake at night? My, my fear is that the gap between the promises that were made in Paris and where we are today in terms of delivery is so huge. And every day investments are being made in the electricity sector. And as long as we cannot make a strong and convincing case to take energy investments in a different direction, they will keep going in the wrong direction. That's what keeps me awake. Ivo, thank you very much for stopping by the Hub Culture Pavilion here in Davos, and I'm Edie Lush.